Okay, so we've already looked at input validation with a simple condition. That means that there's only one condition. So now we're going to look at a program where there is two. So what we have here is a program that's going to ask the user to enter quantity that they're going to purchase. And what we'll also do is just put in a cost. You can see that the cost is £14.99. So when the user inputs anything that's less than 1 or greater than 40, we want to say that that input is invalid and we want to make them re-input it again. So the construct we're going to use is a while loop and what we're going to say is that while the quantity is less than 1 or the quantity is greater than 40, put the colon there and you'll see that again the while loop's indented, we're going to say that that is invalid. Sorry, quantity must be between 1 and 40. We will close the speech marks and close the brackets and then we'll actually just grab this line of text again, this line of code, sorry, because you've always got to allow them to um, type it back in again. And after that, what we would say is we're just going to work out a quick cost and we're going to say Thank you. The cost is. Now we just close the speech marks and we'll see that it's cost multiplied by quantity. Okay. So we're just going to put the cost times quantity in a box and we just need to turn it into a fact. We won't need to turn it into a string, it should be okay there. So if we just close that bracket, if we save the program and we're going to just run it. So let's just check that if, first of all it works okay. So let's just say I buy two of these things and the cost is £29.98. So that seems okay. So that's normal data. Let's go to the edges. So let's say one, £14.99. That's fine. We'll just run it with some extreme data. So the other edge, which is 40. Now we could format to two decimal places, but for the for the example of this program, we're not going to be too worried. Now we're what we're going to do is put in some extreme data, which is going to be above and beyond. So if I put zero, it should say it must be between 40. So let's try 42. That seems to be okay. So I'll just pick a random amount, which is 20. So that is showing input validation with two conditions. And it's using a Boolean or to say that while it's less than a particular value or it's greater than another value. Okay, um, so far we've validated um, some numeric inputs. We're just going to look at some strings. And what we're going to check is if someone is entering a correct guidance house. So we're going to say that the four, the four correct guidance houses are Sherlock, Blackfriars, Sillerton, and Collie Hill. So we're going to ask the user just to enter um, their entry and store it in the variable called guidance house. And what we're going to do is we're going to type out this line here, which says while guidance house is not equal to Blackfriars and it's not equal to Sherlock, and we could also keep that going by say and I'm just going to do a bit of copy and paste in here. So we've got Blackfriars and Stralock, so we'll put Sillerton and Collie Hill. So and Sillerton. And Collie Hill. And if all of that is correct, so we'll just end that line there. We're going to say Sorry, if that is incorrect, we're going to say, sorry, please try again. I'm going to close the speech marks, and we're just going to ask them to enter the house again. And when that's finished, we'll print some simple message like, welcome to, and we'll just close the speech marks, and we'll just put on whatever the guidance house is there. So if we just run and test that, so first of all, let's check if it works. So let's check, for example, Blackfriars. So that should be successful. Welcome to Blackfriars. So let's just run that again. And let's say um, I type in sl Slytherin. It should say that that's incorrect. So if I try again, now this time I'm going to try Blackfriars with a capital B. And you'll notice that please try it again because it's not equal to the exact string. I can show you how to get around to that in a second. So, so far, it does seem to be working okay. So if I just end the program there.
we can, and this is a bit beyond the course rules, we can turn our output into an uppercase letter and check against the uppercase letter. So no matter what the user puts in, it would get around it. So we'll just look at that in a second. So although that's strictly required, what we can say is we're guidance house dot upper. And what we'll do is we'll put black friars in capital letters. So if we put dot upper in all of those conditions, what it does is converts the string into uppercase letters. And then so that way no matter if the user does uppercase or lowercase, we can be sure that we were happy that they've actually typed in the right word. So if I just change these to Sillerton and the last one to Collie Hill. So if we save that and run it again, so let's just check that it still works okay. So Black Friars seems to be okay. Now if you remember the last time when we put Black Friars with capital B, it didn't work. So that works okay. So that uses the uppercase character, uh, sorry, the uppercase function to convert all the string to uppercase letters. Okay, and just in this little part of the video, what we're going to look at is how to validate um, marks when we're these marks when we're a value sorry when we're storing in an array. So what we've got here is a pretty standard program that's going to ask for five names, and five marks. Use a loop to traverse it, and then store an array and print off the names and marks. I know we're not actually doing a great deal with it, but the trouble is we're not validating the mark, and I want a valid mark to be between zero and a hundred. So what we're going to need to do is we need to go and use a while loop. And what we're going to say is that while marks counter is less than zero or marks counter is greater than a hundred, then a pretty standard error message would be to print, print error invalid mark. And then we'll just basically put the same line again. So that would basically go around and validate it until it was uh, correct. A slightly different way to do it because some program languages wouldn't like the fact that you're actually trying to put an invalid value in, in an array. What you could store is temporary mark. So you could put it in a temporary variable. And that means we would just change it to that, and that, and that. And then so once we're happy that that variable is valid, we could basically then say that find in our array, so in marks counter. So in element with position counter, and remember that's controlled by this variable here, we'll just put the temporary mark variable in. So that would be another way of doing it. Either or are perfectly fine.